Hi everybody, this is uh, John. Um, so I have some chores today. As you can see, I have a ladder behind me. I'm actually going to be putting a ceiling fan in here, and uh, I've got my tool big toolbox. So that toolbox is just has my general uh, tools in it. Um, actually, I have a different set of tools for doing working on cars. Uh, this is just the general stuff for general around the house. So I have to do a light switch and a ceiling fan today. Uh, light switch will be in a different room, but. Uh, I thought, well, before I do that, I had an on-call, uh, you know, I'm on call this week, so I'm kind of just sticking to the house, but uh, I got a call for a server that lost a uh, trust relationship with uh, the domain, and it uh, turned out be the, the reason it lost trust, um, trust relationship is because it didn't have the right DNS settings. Um, it had an older set of DNS servers that we had um, deprecated some time ago and then got shut off about a month ago, probably, because uh, the, we require the machines to be on the domain. Uh, Every I think uh, I think it's a 30-day password to expire. Uh, the machines have to touch the domain to keep their trust going. Anyways, um, so probably about 30 days ago, we we had shut down some of those DNS servers, and and uh, now the machines had now that server had no idea where to uh, where to join or where the domain parts were. Anyways, uh, that's why I lost trust with domain. But I thought it would be interesting to show you. So in this case, I. I updated the DNS and I could not get this was a 2008 R2 server so it was kind of a it was a squirrely older server and it was actually behind even on patching so um, I couldn't do a net DOM I couldn't even do a reset computer pass nothing seemed to work I literally had to bounce it off the domain and back back on but um, that's a rare case most of the time I can use a PowerShell command um, at least on the newer servers not that it happens that often um, it's tends I see this or we hear about this more on workstations than we ever do servers the only time I ever see servers come off is if there's a misconfiguration anyways getting to the point of this video so I have my Windows 10 machine here and uh, let's go ahead and connect to it so this is a virtual Windows 10 computer and let's go ahead and log in I just want to show you I can um, and it works so um, this particular computer, I made an admin, local admin account when it first got set up, um, so we might need to use that to log in. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually, oh, the other thing I wanted to show you on this was um, uh, just the name of it so we can get it. Uh, so it's host name. Let's do a host name. So the name of the machine is PC1. So what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and we're going to simulate this breaking. So I'm going to shut this machine down. Do, do just for the love of God turn off okay so it's turned turning off and as you can see it's this machine right here it's this Windows 10 enterprise computer and someday it'll turn off hopefully <laughs> come on oops ease a ease <laughs> Come on, come on. Yeah, I'm just gonna turn it off hard. Turn off and turn off. Okay, it's off. So as we can see, it's turned off in the console and if you open the actual um, virtual machine connection on it, it's off. So I just wanna to prove to you that that's off. Then we can go to DC1, do connect. Um, this is one of the two domain controllers in this environment. Let's log into it. And we're just going to use ADUC, Active Directory Users Computer is also called ADUC, um, to, uh, to uh, delete. What we're going to do is actually delete the computer account, and that should simulate this breaking. So that's it right there, PC1, right? So I'm just going to go ahead and delete that object. All right, cool. So now when we turn this on, we're going to get some sort of error. So let's connect. And let me get this to full screen too, just so I can see if anybody's actually watching. Okay. So let's go ahead and turn this guy on. So now we're turning that same Windows 10 Enterprise computer back on. And when I log in, I should see an error that says the computer account can't be found or the trust is broken, something to that effect. Let's try logging in and see what the exact error is. The security database on the server does not have a computer account 
for this trust relationship. So there's a few different variations of this error, but that's basically something's wrong between the computer, what Active Directory thinks the computer account is and what the PC thinks the computer account is. So if there's any discrepancy, you'll get an error similar to this. So there's two options here. Um, option one, if you don't know or doesn't have a local password, let's see if this works. I don't know if this always works with Windows 10 now, but what we're gonna do is we're actually going to turn off the NIC and let's go ahead and reboot and let's see if we can log in with cache credentials that would be the first option and that's usually the better option if you can do it because a lot of um, <clears throat> a lot of places don't have local accounts on their machine they don't have a local they they've disabled the like admin disabled and typically rename the administrator account um, so let's go ahead and see if we can log in with cache credentials so yes we can so now, so this would simulate either not uh, unplugging the network card or turning off the Wi-Fi or somehow um, not allowing this machine to connect. So we did log in with the, with the um, we can show that here. So we're logged in as, as, um, as with our cache credentials. And again, that would be something else you'd have to have set up on your domain. If not, you'd need to log in locally. One way or the other, you have to do this. Um, and we can say, who am I? And you can see it actually is the domain. Um, if we were logging in locally, it would be PC1 slash John. Now we can also do a, can we do a set L? No, I think you have to do that in the command line. So we can do a set L and that'll tell you what the login server was. Uh, now it says DC1, that's interesting. It must be the last DC it hit. Anyway, you can see there is no connections available. We are not connected. So at this point, we actually would want to, once we're logged in we're not locked, and the machine's not locked, um, we we'll want to go ahead and go back in and connect uh, back to our connect, put the connection back in, and then you can see this should, uh, now we should be able to ping DC1, right? Yep. So now we're <clears throat> so now we're back on the network. So um, you can do a net dom. That's kind of the older school way. It would be a net dom command. Um, but there is a newer way, and it's in my. Um, let's go to here. I should have brought this up. I apologize. Tuna free dolphin. So this is a blog post I wrote. Uh, Delayed reason no. See, I think it's ah here we go so this and I put the link in the description but uh, basically um, you can do essentially this set of commands so it's just test network or I'm sorry test dash computer secured channel slash credential your domain count slash repair so the trick is you have to run power so what we actually have to do is run PowerShell here as administrator so again you'd want to do all of this sort of stuff before you connect it to the network so you'd want to run this administrator this thing as administrator otherwise you might get an error um, if it was trying to authenticate <clears throat> depending on how you have it so we should be able to do test network connection and then what was the rest of it I forget uh, test secure channel sorry not test network connection Computer secure channel. Wow, if I can. It's early. I guess it's a little early still. <laughs> Computer secure channel dash repair, I believe. And then we'll say, um, let's see, the domain is happy subnet, and we'll do. So my account John is actually a domain admin. And then uh, what's the last part of this? Oh, I guess I already did the repair. Repair, and then. Would actually put the credential here let's do this credential so and then it should prompt us for the password um, yep and if you didn't mistype something here you could put it there but let's go ahead and type this so just so we can show you before I hit enter let's go back to that DC real quick and let's do a quick search for PC one uh, computers PC1 and there are no items called PC1. Now the beauty of this is if for some reason your account was fine or there, the account already existed, 
uh, didn't get deleted but just somehow lost trust you actually don't even have to reboot but in this case we will because uh, hmm. oh we can't do a repair Let's go here. so it does not like that so I haven't tried this before huh Computer. So the object must already have to have exist, and actually that's an easy way to fix this. We can run this again. So I'll just make, so I'll pre-stage the object. That'll probably be the easiest way to do this, DC1. So let's call, so let's make a new computer called PC1, and say okay. And now, in theory, we should be able to run this again. password PC one yep. There it goes. It just took a second for it to go. So the object must already has to have exists. So now we should be able to go to where is it? Um, PC one and let's see. Operating system doesn't have anything yet. So. Ah, wow! I'm bouncing all over the place. Sorry. Uh, let's see, PC1, oh, we want to go back to our Windows machine, I want to see what it says. So we actually got a fault that time, so that's good. Um, so I'm going to clear this. Uh, true, okay, that should have fixed it. So I pre-staged the object, I think I just didn't let replication go long enough, it may be trying to go to DC2 for whatever reason. Um, Let's go to DC one and let's let's refresh and then go here. Ah, look at that. So now we have the operating system, uh, and so now we should be able to restart this computer. Where is it? Windows ten. So let's just do a restart computer, and then we should be able to log in with our domain credentials again. Sorry, it's a bit of a long way to get there. So essentially, we have to make sure that that object does exist. It won't, um, so that's a limitation. Where NetDOM will actually recreate the object for you. That's interesting. Versus uh, test computer, uh, what was it? Test computer, oh, test computer secure channel won't. It's not meant to create, it's just meant to uh, repair the object, which makes sense. So then we should be able to log in and boom. So now we're logged back in. We have the same profile we did before. Um, so we should be able to see, yep. So that's it. Um, I know it was a little clunky to show you, but essentially the short version of this is um, make sure the computer object exists uh, and use this. So I, I think this desk computer secure channel didn't come out until PowerShell 3, um, but I'm not 100% sure. So I don't think this will work on 2008 R2 or Windows 7 machines, but Windows 8 or 2012 and newer servers should uh, should work. So again, it's it's a, it's an easier way than trying to have to uh, do a netdom command because uh, netdom does require a reboot after. And also, um, and also this was something that's actually scriptable. Uh, and comes back with, of course, objects versus um, my dog's chewing a bone um, instead of uh, instead of just strings. Uh, NetDom will just output strings, which you can deal with, but uh, you know it's always better to deal with objects. Anyways, thanks for watching, and uh, I will see you guys soon.